Hello Grade 12s and a warm welcome to all of you. At the end of the year, you will be required to write an NSC or National Senior Certificate Examination for History. In order to prepare for this examination, it is important for you to know your work and therefore it is very important that you study all the relevant content. However, it is equally important for you to know the skills that we teach you because although the examiners are testing your content knowledge, they are also testing your ability to extract, interpret, analyze, and argue. But don't stress, because I will help you revise these skills so that you can better prepare yourself for this examination. In today's lesson, we are going to start with History Paper 1, and we are going to take a closer look at Question 1. Now, Question 1 is a source-based section, which focuses on understanding the origins of the Cold War. We are going to start off by revising Level 1 Extraction Questions, and how we should go about to answer it. But remember, all of the skills that we are going to be revising today will also apply to all of the other topics that we cover in Grade 12. Okay, so let's start off by briefly taking a look at all the things that we are going to be covering in today's lesson. Firstly, I'm going to give you a very brief outline of the origins of the Cold War and what content you should focus on when preparing for the section. Then, for the rest of the lesson, we're going to revise your source-based skills. Our focus today is going to be to take a look at how examiners will ask Level 1 extraction questions and what your answer should look like. Let's start with a brief outline of the origins of the Cold War. When you prepare for the section of work, it is important that you understand that the Cold War was an ideological war between two world powers of the time, America and the Soviet Union, capitalism versus communism. You must know how America and the Soviet Union both attempted to spread their influence in Europe after World War II. This includes things like the Iron Curtain, America's policy of containment, which consisted of the Truman Doctrine and the Marshall Plans, and the Soviet Communist Information Bureau, or Common Form, and the Council for Mutual Economic Assistance, or Comicon. You must also study the Berlin Crisis, the period between 1948 and 1961 in Berlin, with specific focus on the Berlin blockade and the Berlin Wall. Now remember, in accordance to the Grade 12 CAPS document, and the examination guidelines, the examiner can focus on any of these aspects when they examine you in your NSC examination at the end of the year. So it is very important that you study all of this content in preparation for that examination. Now that we know what content we must study, let's focus on the skills that we will be examined on. Remember, the examiner will not only test your content knowledge, they are also going to test the skills that we need to study history effectively. Today, the skill that we are going to focus on is Level 1 Extraction Questions. Now, in your NSC examination, the examiner will examine the skills that you will need as a historian to research history effectively. Remember, history is the study of past events. Historians are the detectives of history, and it is their job to try to reconstruct the truth based on the available evidence. Their task is to collect or extract all the relevant evidence from various primary and secondary sources. They will then interpret this evidence. Once the evidence has been interpreted, they will evaluate its reliability in order to know whether or not it is a credible source of information. Then the historian will evaluate its usefulness as well as the limitations of the evidence in helping them understand the historical event. They will then corroborate the evidence with other sources by focusing on the similarities and differences. Once this is complete, they will use the information they have gathered to write an article, essay, thesis, or a book about the historical event. 
Now, all these skills will be examined in your NSC examination. Each skill will fall within a specific category of questioning. There are three categories. Level one questions will test your ability to extract evidence from various sources. Level two questions will test your ability to interpret evidence from various sources. And level three questions will test your ability to evaluate a source's reliability, usefulness, and limitations, as well as test your ability to compare similarities and differences from various sources. Okay, so let's take a look at level one extraction questions. These are questions that test your skill of extracting relevant evidence from a source. Now, when you extract information from a source, you are removing it directly as it is without making any changes to it. So in other words, you are basically quoting the information. Remember that you must never paraphrase or use your own words, even if the question doesn't specifically ask you to quote. Now, how do we know that the question that we are reading is a level one extraction question? Well, that's pretty easy. All that we need to do is we have to look for the following words. According to the source, what, when, where, who, why, how, name, list, and quote. When we see these words in a question, then we know that we are dealing with a level one extraction question. And all that we need to do is we need to find the answer in the source and quote it without changing any of the words. Okay, so let's look at an example. The question in front of you reads as follows. According to the source, what was Truman's motivation for implementing the Truman Doctrine? Now, when we look at this question, which part of the question tells us that this is a level one question? If you said the part that says, according to the source and what, then you are 100% correct. Okay, so now that we know that this is a level one extraction question, we have to answer it. But first we need to know what the question is asking us to extract. So let's read the question again. According to the source, what was Truman's motivation for the implementation of the Truman Doctrine? Now, what do you think this question is asking us to extract? The question is asking us to extract Truman's motivation for implementing the Truman Doctrine. So now that we know that we must extract evidence because of the words according to the source and what, and we know what information the question wants us to extract. Are we ready to answer the question? No, because we first need to take a look at the mark allocation. OK, so I know that this might sound silly, but taking notes of the mark allocation is actually very, very, very important. And the reason is because so many times students throw away unnecessary marks because they don't actually check the mark allocation. And the mark allocation is very important because it actually tells you how many facts you need to include in your answer. So in front of you, we see an example of what a mark allocation in your NSC examination will actually look like. So you can see that the example says one times two equals two. And when we look at those numbers, it is important for us to understand what each number actually means. That is going to then help us to understand how much we need to write. Now, the first number, the number one that you see in front of you, that is the most important number for you as the candidate writing the examination, because that number tells you how many facts you have to write. So you can see that that number says one, 
which means that if this is your mark allocation, you will only need to write one fact. The second number that you see, which is a two, that number tells you how many marks you will get for each fact that you give. So in this case, because it is a two, it means that when you give your one fact as an answer, you are going to get two marks for it. And then the last mark, that just indicates the total amount of marks that you will receive for this question. And you can see that it is two marks because for one fact, if you are going to receive two marks for it, your total will be two marks. Now back to our level one extraction question. If we look at the mark allocation, then how many facts do we need to include in our answer? If you said three, then you are 100% correct. Why? Because the mark allocation says three times one. Now we are finally ready to give our answer. But before we do this, we must first read the source carefully, and then we must decide what information to extract, which will best answer the question. So let's read the source together. And while we read the source, I want you to think about which three phrases of the source we should highlight, which will answer our question. So the source says, President Truman of the USA was also worried though without any real evidence, about possible Russian control of the Eastern Mediterranean. In 1947, civil war was fought in Greece between the government and the communists. Truman also feared a possible takeover by Russia of Turkey. He therefore made a speech in 1947 in which he announced that America would be giving economic aid to Greece and Turkey. He also said that the USA would support peoples trying to keep their political freedom. This came to be called the Truman Doctrine. Now, after reading the source, which three phrases do you think we should highlight which will answer our question? If you said that we should highlight the following three phrases, number one, possible Russian control of the Eastern Mediterranean, number two, civil war was being fought in Greece between the government and the communists, and number three, Truman also feared a possible takeover by Russia of Turkey, then you are 100% correct. Because these three phrases tells us why Truman was motivated to implement the Truman Doctrine. Okay, so now that we have our evidence to answer the question, we need to know how the examiner wants us to write our answer. If you focus your attention to the bottom corner on the left hand side of the slide, then you will see what your answer should look like. Now, if you compare my answer to the information in the source, then you will notice that I've quoted every single word, word for word, as it is in the source. I haven't changed the words at all. I wrote down all three phrases because remember the mark allocation was three times one. So therefore, I will receive three marks. Now, this is the one thing that you have to remember when you are dealing with a level one question. Your answer has to always be quoted. The question might not tell you to quote, but if you identify the question as a level one question, you have to quote the answer from the source. And the reason is because the skill that the examiner is trying to teach you is to extract evidence directly from a source. Okay, so now that we've completed the examples, and you know how to identify and answer a level one extraction question, I'm going to ask you to practice to identify and answer it by yourself. So what you need to do is you're going to have to download the attached activity 
and then you're going to have to take a few minutes to complete it. While completing it, remember to make sure that you follow each and every instruction very carefully. While you complete the activity, I want you to pause this video and once you have completed it, then you can unpause it and then we will mark the video together. Hello grade 12 and welcome back. Okay, so you were supposed to complete the activity for me. Now let's mark the activity together. So the first question that you were given was as follows. According to the author of the source, what was the Iron Curtain? Now when we read this question, what part of this question indicates to us that it is a level one question? If you said the words according to the author of the source and what, then you are 100% correct. Okay, so now that we have identified the question as a level one question, are we ready to answer the question? No, not yet. Because remember, we first have to understand what the question is asking us to do. So let's read the question again quick, quickly and then we decide together what the question is asking us to do. So the question says, according to the author of the source, what was the Iron Curtain? So what do you think the question is asking us to do? The question is asking us what the Iron Curtain was. Okay, so now that we have identified it as a level one question, so we know that we must quote the answer from the source, and we know what to look for, we have to look for what the Iron Curtain was, are we finally ready to answer our question? No, because remember, we still have to look at the mark allocation. So let's look at the mark allocation. And then I want you to think about how many facts we have to include in our answer. If you said one, then you are 100% correct. Why? Because the mark allocation says one times two. Okay, so we've identified our question as level one. So we know that we must quote the evidence from the source. We know that the evidence that we must look for is something that explains to us what the Iron Curtain was. And we know that we only have to look for one thing that explains to us what the Iron Curtain was. So let's read the source and then we try to find the information that we are going to extract to answer our question. As we read the source, I want you to think about what parts of the source we are going to have to highlight, which we are going to use to answer our question. Okay, so the source says, the Iron Curtain described hard borders between Eastern Europe and the rest of the continent during the Cold War. By early 1945, Nazi forces in Europe were in retreat. Pursued by the Americans and the British from the West and the Soviet forces from the East. Nations in Eastern Europe, Poland, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, Romania and Bulgaria were liberated by the Soviet Red Army. After the war had ended, the Soviets remained in these countries longer than expected and longer than necessary. They had work to do as agents worked behind the scenes to Sovietize these countries. In other words, they were left with puppet governments that served as an extension of the Kremlin. Okay, so after looking at that source, what information in the source do you think we need to highlight, which is ultimately going to answer our question?
if you said the following phrase, hard borders between Eastern Europe and the rest of the continent during the Cold War, then you are 100% correct. Okay, so now that we have the information from the source that we are going to quote as our answer, we have to decide how are we going to write our answer down. So ultimately, this is what your answer should look like. Hard borders between Eastern Europe and the rest of the continent during the Cold War. You cannot write anything else. And the reason is because this is a level one extraction question. So if you wrote that information, but you wrote it in your own words, then technically your answer is wrong. And the reason is because we are teaching you the skill of extracting evidence. And when we extract evidence, we have to quote the evidence. So again, Nowhere in the question have we actually asked you to quote information, but because we use the words according to the author of the source and what, you must automatically know that that is a level one question, and you must automatically know that when you get a level one question, you have to quote the answer directly from the source. So if you got it correct, then you can give yourself two marks. If you didn't get it correct, don't be hard on yourself, because remember, practice makes perfect. So the more that you practice it, the better you are going to get at answering level one questions. OK, so let's look at our second question. The question says, list three countries that form part of the Iron Curtain. Now, when we look at this question, which word or words indicate that this question is a level one question? If you said the word list, then you are 100% correct. Okay, so now we have identified this question as a level one extraction question. Can we now answer the question? No, because remember, we must first figure out what the question is asking us to do. So we're going to read the question again together, and then I want you to decide what the question is asking us to do. So the question says, list three countries that form part of the Iron Curtain. The question wants us to find the countries that formed part of the Iron Curtain. OK, so now we know that it's a level one question, which means that we have to quote our answer from the source. We know what we have to find. We have to look for the countries that formed part of the Iron Curtain. So are we finally ready to answer the question? No, because remember, we must also still look at the mark allocation. Now, when we look at the mark allocation to this question, how many countries do you think we have to find? If you said three, then you are 100% correct. Why? Because the mark allocation indicates three times one. But in this question, you can actually see that the question itself indicates how many countries we have to look for. It actually says, list three countries that form part of the Iron Curtain. Okay, so I'm not going to read the source again with you because we have already read the source, but I'm going to give you one minute to read the source yourself, and then I want you to find three countries that formed part of the Iron Curtain.
Okay, so the source actually gives us five countries. It gives us Poland, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, Romania, and Bulgaria. And if you chose any three of those five countries, then you are 100% correct. If you chose Eastern Europe, Eastern Europe, remember, is not a country. Europe is a continent. So Eastern Europe will be the eastern side of the continent of Europe. The countries in that area that form part of the Iron Curtain is the five countries that is mentioned. Poland, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, Romania, and Bulgaria. Okay, so now that we know what information we're going to quote, we have to figure out how we are going to write our answer. So this is what your answer will look like. Again, you can see that I've quoted the answer directly from the source. I have quoted all five, but when you write down your answer, you only have to quote any three of those five countries as your answer. So if you have quoted three of them, then you will give yourself one tick per country that you have quoted correctly. If you haven't quoted the countries correctly, then again, don't be hard on yourself because remember, practice makes perfect. So the more we practice it, the better you are going to get with quoting evidence from a source. The final question that you received is as follows. How, according to the source, did the Soviet Union create the Iron Curtain? Now, when we read this question, what part of the question tells us that this is a level one question? If you said the words how and according to the source, then you are 100% correct. Okay, so now we've identified this as a level one question. Are we ready to answer it? No, not yet, because remember, we must first indicate what the question is asking us to do. So let's read the question again together, and then you must decide what the question is asking us to do. Okay, so the question says, how, according to the source, did the Soviet Union create the Iron Curtain? So what do you think this question is asking us to do? Okay, so the question is asking us, how did the Soviet Union create the Iron Curtain? So now we know that this is a level one question, so we have to quote our answer directly from the source. We also know what information we must look for. We have to look for information that tells us how the Soviet Union created the Iron Curtain. So are we finally ready to answer this question? The answer is no, because remember, we must first look at the mark allocation. So when we look at the mark allocation, how many facts are we supposed to write down as our answer? If you said four, then you are 100% correct. Why? Because the mark allocation says, four times one. Okay, so now we know that this is a level one question, so we have to quote our answer directly from the source. We also know what information we must look for. We must look for information that tells us how the Soviet Union created the Iron Curtain, and we know that we have to look for four things. So now I want you to look for four pieces of evidence from the source which we can highlight and use as our answer. I'm going to give you a minute or so just to read through the source again, and then just to decide what of the information we can highlight as answering our question.
If you said the following phrases, then you are 100% correct. The first one being, nations in Eastern Europe were liberated by the Soviet Red Army. The second one, the Soviets remained in these countries longer than expected and longer than necessary. The third one, agents worked behind the scenes to Sovietize these countries. And the fourth one, they were left with puppet governments that served as an extension of the Kremlin. Okay, so now we have our highlighted evidence. To answer the question, all that we need to do now is we need to know how we are going to write our answer down. Okay, so this is what your answer should look like. On the bottom left hand corner, you will see that I've got four points. And under each point, you can see that the information is quoted directly as it is from the source. I haven't paraphrased it. I also didn't write it in my own words. I quoted it word for word as it is in the source. So when you are marking your answers, you must make sure that you have quoted the words directly from the source. If you wrote it in your own words, then you cannot give you the mark for your answer. Okay, so you should have four ticks in total because remember the mark allocation is four times one. So if you received four ticks for this question, then well done to you. If you didn't, then please don't be hard on yourself because remember Rome wasn't built in a day. The more you practice this, the better you are going to get at it. Okay, so let's quickly recap what you've learned. So firstly, remember that you've got to look for the words that identifies it as a level one question. Who can remember what are these words? Okay, so repeat after me, according to the source, what, when, where, who, how, why, name, list, and quote. If we see those words in the question, then remember, it is a level one question and we are always going to quote our answer. The next step is to read the question carefully so that we know what information we must quote. Then the next step, remember, is that we have to look at the mark allocation because we have to know how much we must quote. And then fourthly, we're going to read the source to find the information that we must quote. And lastly, we're going to quote the answer from the source. Great Twelves, this is the end of the lesson. Thank you so much for your patience and participation. I really hope that I got to teach you something in this lesson today. And remember to continue to practice because practice makes perfect. I hope that you guys all have a lovely day further.